Okay, Transformers, Age of Extinction. I liked how they focused a lot more on the robots and robots fighting. I did not care at all for most any of the humans. For, uh, for Marky Mark, for older, older, older pro-statutory rape uh, boyfriend who holds the card with him, just in case someone asked a question about it. The woman who was the replacement for the replacement of Megan Fox, I really just did not care at all when she was in any sort of peril. The relationship she had with her dad, Marky Mark, eh. Kelsey Grammer, good good job as a... Uh, uh, the way this film is done, I also wish she had a black hat and he's twirling the mustache the whole time. And then you have, I think it's uh, Stanley Tucci is essentially playing an evil Steve Jobs, or Steve Jobs. Basic premise, of course, is the military has yet again turned on the Autobots. And is hunting them down. Just now, apparently, we're good at it? It took, took how many films of just getting destroyed by the Decepticons? It's like, oh, now all of a sudden we have regular guns that can stop Autobots? And, of course, if you happen to see the trailer, you pretty much basically know that Marky Mark finds Optimus Prime. Brings him back. Which then means... Which then makes the, the super evil military, which also has super evil Steve Jobs, begin to hunt them down because they want Optimus Prime. Why? I'm not going to tell you why, because that's, like, the primary plot of the film. If you want to see the Dinobots, they appear as statues in the very beginning... And they're there for the end fight sequence. And, I mean, they're, they're barely there for the end fight sequence. It does have moments that, I'll be honest, when, when Optimus Prime ends up going from the bizarre beat-up truck into, like, old-school blue with red flames, and they do that... <laughs> that was a pretty awesome moment. Awesome solid trailer. Again, no spoiler. Optimus Prime with a sword in his hand, riding a flame-throwing Grimlock. Pretty sweet. So it's got moments where you're like, yeah, it's my childhood. And the moments where you're like, ah, oh, it's my childhood. But like the previous ones, if you enjoyed them, it's almost identical. You know, lots of over the top action. I, I will say in this one, uh, humans again have John McClane syndrome, where regardless of what happens to them, I'm watching them, it's like, okay, well, dead by impact. Now they're deathly dead by the shrapnel. You can't... You can't do that. Look all the stuff flying at them. They're totally dead from all the wreck. It's with broken glass everywhere. They're to... There's debris. They're, how could these three people not be the ones that are dead? And they actually do kill quite a few people. Whereas PG, you're, you know, they're not sure they don't show a lot of blood. Except for the the one person who they show they show blood on like post death blood, and the other person that they do a very unique, awesome way of killing him. He's a character you're like, eh, he's kind of annoying. I hope he's not in the whole film. Oh, cool, he's not. That's oh, not bad. Not bad at all. So that's it for the, the the primary film. You know, it was decent. I, I will say I don't know why this film is like an hour. It was like two hours and forty minutes. I know there's a lot of slow down shots, and there's a lot of fluff added to it. It almost got to the point where the film just felt way too long. And pretty much every act is about the same. It was like, it's like, you have your robot battle, human exposition, robot battle, transition to new location, human exposition, robot battle, human exposition, transition, I mean, that's all it is. It's human exposition, robot battle and then transition to new location.